kaligtasan. Pinupuri ka namin, Panginoong Heso Kristo. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Father. Our greetings to those who are in the health environment and safety of their homes are celebrating the faith and renewing the faith in the Lord Jesus who, suffering and dying, reconciled us to God. Um, and therefore, God released His forgiveness towards us. And at the same time, by rising from the dead, He opened to us the new reality which we call hope. And in overcoming death, He also tells us that there is nothing actually that cannot be overcome by faith. These words of the Lord Jesus, our faith in the Lord Jesus, which we are celebrating in tonight's sacrament, is the first thing that we should understand as the context of our gathering today. In the sacrament of the Eucharist, He is very much present in our life. He walks with us, He strengthens us, He nourishes us with the bread of life, which is His body. The second context in which to appreciate the gospel today is that life is a journey. And we are on the first day of the fifth month of the year. And slowly and slowly, we are moving forward. And for us Christians and for those who believe in the Lord Jesus, our destiny is what the Lord refers to in, in the Gospel of St. John, in my Father's house. That is where we all would be seeing each other, celebrating the company of those who have gone ahead of us in our Father's house. And a brief word on death. Well, nobody can live forever in this world. If we look at Jesus, his cross reminds us that even the Son of God did not escape the real reality of dying. So, if the Son of God who is not supposed to die, died. So let us also accept that reality as part of our journey. Nobody lives forever in this world. Somehow, somehow we have to live this world. What we do not know is when, where, and for what reason. Nowadays, we think of the COVID virus as the main cause of death. Yes. But there are those who also die, not by the COVID virus, by all of a sudden the heart ceases to beat, some accidents. But it's the same experience and same reality of death. But for us Christians, the end of our journey is the Father's house. That is where we are all going. That is where Jesus accompanies us on our way to the Father's house. In the meantime, the one who accompanies us speaks to us in the Gospel today. In order to appreciate the intention of St. John, the author of the Gospel today, first of all, St. John presents to us Jesus as the Word of God, as God Himself. For those who are familiar with the first lines of His Gospel, it states this way, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. So St. John presents Jesus as God Himself. And something of the situation we are, wherein John writes the gospel. It is the year 90. And during those times, during that year, or during even the previous years, the early Christian community that was under his care was experiencing terrible threat, threats on account of their faith, on account of their missionary activity. They were threatened. Some of them were thrown into jail, and most of them were killed. And St. John was also victim of this persecution, he was exiled into a small island in Greece called Patmos, from where he began to write the gospel with the purpose of comforting, consoling, 
the suffering Christians. St. John, in presenting Jesus, especially today and the days before, well, during, actually during the entire Easter week, he presents Jesus with, I am. Today we hear him say, I am the vine. The other Sunday we heard him say, I am the good shepherd. I am the gate. How should we understand this? The first time that we heard about I am was in the time of Moses when God appearing to him in a burning bush and ordered him to go to Pharaoh to release the captives, the slaves. And, and Moses asked him, what shall I tell the Pharaoh? Who are you? And God tells him, I am. When St. John, when St. John speaks of Jesus as God, he presents him precisely with, that, with those two words, I am. I am. To appreciate the gospel today, we have to go back to the intention of St. John in writing to the early Christian community. What was happening with the early Christian community? They were being persecuted. They were being threatened. They were being thrown to jail. And because of this, we can imagine that some Christians, some disciples of Jesus, would like to abandon the faith. That some of them was also, were also doubting if they were actually following Jesus and, it is, and was it worth the following of Jesus when all around them were dangers of persecution and threats. So, St. John addresses the early Christian community in their fears by saying, I am. That means to say that they are following God himself. And in the message of the gospel today, directed to those fearful and doubting early Christians, St. John makes Jesus say, Remain in me. Manatili kayo sa akin. Remain. Remain. And in this remain, Jesus explains that the fruitfulness of the disciples is precisely that amidst the threats and difficulties that they were undergoing is precisely staying with the Lord. What is this for us today? In a way, we are also persecuted, not for our faith, but because of the danger of the pandemic. And because we don't see kind of lights at the end of the tunnel, and because even if we hear of vaccines, there is still a lot of confusion. And we cannot, we cannot um, blame those who are so deeply move and touched by these confusions to even question their faith in God. Where is God? Why does he allow this evil to happen? If God is good, why this evil? So, to those of us in this journey towards our Father's house, St. John makes Jesus, as he made Jesus speak to the early Christian community, the same message. Remain with me. Stay with me. Because moving away from me, abandoning me, you cannot do anything. You will be fruitless in your faith. In spite of your efforts, you cannot do anything. So the purpose of this reflection is to help us renew our faith in Jesus in spite of the fears and doubts that we feel around us, we are being urged by Jesus to stay with him, remain with him. And the reception of Jesus in Holy Communion for those who are celebrating their faith in the comfort and safety of their homes through spiritual communion, the message remains the same. Stay with Jesus. Don't lose your faith. Don't lose your hope. Remain with Jesus. Jesus who has conquered death 
will be the source of our strength. We ask the Lord for ourselves that in spite of this difficult journey that we are in, that we listen to the word of Jesus who asks us to remain with him because he is God. And to those who are in doubt, to those who are fearful, fearful, we pray for them that they open their ears, open their hearts to listen to the one who is able to comfort them. Jesus, remain with me.